legends. Yo, we are going to Fat Town, baby. Fat oh, Town. Today's all about talking about the fat. We're not talking about the P H A T. We're talking about F A T from M A T. <laughs> so fly. Oh my goodness. All right. So uh, the fat is substrate number two of the macro macronutrients that we're talking about this week. We are in indeed. Now. So you go. You go. You're in, you're no, in the you zone. go. Okay, go, okay. <laughs> Easy. So we're talking about the macro of fat, which is one gram, one tiny little gram of fat is nine calories. You need to get that clear really quickly from the start. So one gram, nine calories. One gram of carbohydrates is four and a half calories. So you can mm. have two grams of carbohydrates to one gram of fat, and it would equal the same from that point Great of view. Great math. I'm good, I've been working on them, doing my abacus, little moving thing along. Anyway, what we're talking about is um, fat and its its role in the body. So when yep. When people talk about fat, they reference good fat, bad fat. You always hear that in the fitness industry all the time. So it's okay, I'm having good fats and they're having their avocados and stuff like that. And they justify the idea of fat by being a good fat or a bad fat. Now you can ask them what are some other good fats and they generally can't tell you anything other than an avocado. So what we're gonna talk about is how does it go when it gets into the body? And it's simple, good or bad, it does not matter. It just packs in as fat. Just like when we talked about carbohydrates yesterday, how carbohydrates in the body are just seen as carbohydrates. However, the good, whatever is considered as good carbohydrates, just come with other added benefits like fiber and phytochemicals and minerals and vitamins and all that kind of thing. Same thing goes for the good fats. Exactly. However, from a storage point of view, it all goes to the same place. Now, in our body, we have uh, fat cells, mm -hmm. and they have, uh, well, I think it's billions, or it's either millions and billions, there's billions. lots and lots and lots. With a B. And with the ability to multiply, meaning that um, once they're full, they're sourced full, they just create another little bubble yep. and just start filling that bubble. There's an unlimited amount that you can have of fat cells in your body. That means that your level of fatness can be uncapped. It just keeps you on going. You can keep going, going to fat okay. town if you like. Which is really, really crazy. Now, fat can be used as a fuel source in the body. Yes, it is not the body's preferred fuel source, carbohydrates are, mm -hmm. but it can be used as a, as a fuel source. Now, people will reference keto and keto is life, baby, and uh, I'll burn, I'll eat fat, so I burn fat works to a degree however if you get super fit if you just focus on getting fit your body can um, go between burning carbohydrates and fat which helps you get super super lean and a, a super awesome fit machine it is true so like Sheridan was talking about when we talk about ketosis or keto it's the body going into ketosis which is ability the body's ability to burn fat but and it, it burns the fat cells. Only does that once there's no carbohydrates to burn. Correct, which is what I was going to. So if you can get your body, if you're only eating fat and that's yep. all you ate, nothing else, it would live in that zone of being able to burn fat. However, the world we live in, the society we live in is full of carbohydrates. And mm -hmm. anytime you have a vegetable, a fruit, a grain of some description, it shifts back into carbohydrate land because it's always preferred source, which means you're now no longer in ketosis. You're actually back in carbohydrate land. Now mm -hmm. the process of shifting over there is takes a long time. It's actually quite painful. It's almost like uh, a hangover kind of transition. It's not smooth. It doesn't feel great. It actually takes time to get there. However, like Sheridan was saying, instead of doing it aggressively through food, if you just focus on primarily on increasing your fitness yes. and you could be super fit, you can burn both. You can create this beautiful balance. So the idea is that we create a nice, even balanced nutrition. We use the carbohydrates for our energy. So we've got plenty of uh, energy for our brain and for our body. And then we can shift into the fat cells and do that as well. So we have this perfect blend of riching, ripping through the energy, which gives us a nice stream of consistent energy. <gasps> I think I'm done for the fats. What foods are fat? We've got things like avocado. Oh, yes. A lot of uh, fatty foods have um, the other substrates uh, present. So um, a portion of it is fat and a portion is protein or portion fat, portion carbohydrate. Yeah, like so meat, meat uh, is mainly protein, but it is accompanied by fat. You've got avocados, you've got eggs, they're nuts. protein and fat. You've got nuts, um, heaps of things like that. Yeah. So we want to keep fat because fat stores as fat, nothing else, and it's not your preferred fuel source, you don't want to be having too much fat. And the other thing is to remember that one gram of fat is double the amount of carbohydrates. So you can't forget that oh, I'm just having some fat. It's because it's a heavy price in our magic number and our calorie point of view mm -hmm. to take off that number. So fat will blow it out really quickly yep. if you don't watch it and manage it. That's the importance of uh, understanding macros and how they work because every bit of food has a portion of different kind of macros in it. Yep. And if it's not being calculated, then all of a sudden your body is still calculating it mm -hmm. for you. So you'll pay the consequences of that because you're not paying attention to that. Mm. Easy. So pay attention so you don't go to fat town. That's it.
Muy bien, tal. <risa>